Good evening. My name is David Zarling, and I'll discuss SARS-CoV-2 variants in our development of multivalent antigen vaccines and COVID-19 monoclonal antibody therapeutics. Uh, this is a safe part of our statement regarding forward-looking statements. And what we have seen is a major problem is the global unmet need that exists for billions of doses of affordable, safe, and effective recombinant antigen vaccines. And large quantities of monoclonal antibodies for SARS-CoV-2 and variants that cause COVID-19 disease. And the solution, as we see it, is to use genetically engineered thermophilic filamentous fungus, which I'll refer to as C1 cells, for protective antigen vaccine and monoclonal antibody production in greater amounts, uh, faster and more efficiently and affordably using standard microbial fermenters uh, at flexible commercial scales for global production. So what we're looking for is equitable and affordable global vax for vaccines and MABs for monoclonal antibodies. And the global health care challenges that we are uh, discussing today for pandemics, SARS-CoV-2 and others, uh, and the zoonotics that spread between animals and people are affecting the growing and aging populations. And so there's a remarkable uh, need for accessible, affordable medications and new multivalent vax and MABs for uh, the global population. And so this need to produce billions of safe doses of affordable vaccines is relevant for SARS-CoV-2 variants causing COVID-19 disease. So the uh, filamentous thermostable fungal C1 cell were common in protein product advantages in terms of purity, productivity, scalability, rapidity, and low cost I mentioned here. Uh, we have manufacturing scales that uh, go to 500,000 liters and uh, CGMP manufacturing or in uh, stable genetically identical clonal C1 cell lines can be made in seven weeks. And those are producing recombinant proteins at grams per liter scale in just four to five days. And so I want you to know that the C1 cell culture saves 30 days versus uh, mammalian Chinese hamster ovary cells with 1 20th of the media cost. For example, the manufacturing of three to four monoclonal antibody batches occurs in the same time as it takes for one batch using Cho cells. So high yields, rapid manufacturing, uh, reducing the production cost and uh, very significantly reducing the manufacturing footprint. So these uh, C1 cells produce not only high levels of uh, MABs and VAX, but also uh, low cost enzymes for textiles, biofuels, pulp and paper, food cellulases. In fact, the FDA has given grass certification for the C1 manufactured celluloses. Uh, and these are produced on low, so low cost synthetic defined media. The cell lines have uh, reduced protease activities and unique glycan structures. The uh, genetic engineering of the genome and the uh, overexpression of the desired RNA and uh, secreted protein product allows us to take the SARS-CoV-2 uh, VAC candidate uh, in, uh, on our drawing board into a proposed uh, uh, development for uh, finishing the preclinical and then the proposed uh, uh, clinical 
uh, anticipated phase one trial after we complete the talks in the uh, CGMP production. So I want you to focus on the yields of recombinant glycoprotein VAX and MABS here. MABS, 24 and a half grams per liter, uh, 3.1 grams per liter per day for the VAX. Uh, look here at uh, the capacity to produce three and a half grams per liter. Uh, and so these are remarkable yields and purities. And so when you uh, do the calculations and you look, for example, at a SARS-CoV-2 RBD VAC candidate that's manufactured in a C1 uh, commercial scale for production of a, a vaccine, you can see here that the predicted C1 cell fermentation capabilities for the different SARS-CoV-2 RBD back dose requirements, either without or with uh, coupling to a uh, multimeric protein scaffold particle, you can see that the, uh, the productivity from the thermofilamentous fungal C1 produced RBD vaccine has significant potential for a safe and effective low cost prime boost vaccine as a candidate product that can be rapidly manufactured at flexible commercial scales for cost-effective global commercialization. So with uh, 40 kilos of product, uh, you can get uh, billions of doses as shown here. So our focus in 2021, the SARS-CoV-2 and animal health and human biopharma is to continue to prepare for a potential human phase one clinical trial with the C1 manufactured SARS-CoV-2 RBD, demonstrate safety and efficacy in, in the human subjects and expand the antigen backs to rapidly respond to SARS-CoV-2 variants. And we anticipate this potential phase one trial in the EU with a C1 manufactured uh, SARS-CoV-2 monoclonal antibody. We'll talk more about that. Uh, we are continuing in our animal health program to advance commercial recombinant antigen back candidates into animal trials with global animal health companies. And we're generating additional safety and efficacy data with our zoonotic ZAPI for a uh, group for C1 cell Schmallenberg and Rift Valley fever recombinant antigen backs. And in our human program, we're advancing a monoclonal with an oncology biopharma and advancing a bispecific monoclonal with uh, autoimmune uh, biopharma regulatory uh, registration potential. And the glycoengineering for the anti PD1 Updevo as a biosimilar is a very interesting MAP, MAP candidate, which we can discuss. So we've been successfully making our milestones in sponsored strategic collaborations. And we're very proud of the work that we've been able to do with the Zoonoses Anticipation Preparedness, Preparedness Initiative, ZAPI, uh, in the uh, 20 million euro uh, R&D program that's sponsored by the EU nations. And the ZAPI experts uh, have created now with us uh, remarkable data sets for the ability to see one to respond to new infectious diseases. Schmallenberg antigen that's produced in C1 cells is, is very stable and it's produced 300 times at, greater, at 300 times greater levels versus SBV antigen that produced from insect cells uh, from a baculovirus vector. The SBV antigen produced from C1 cells enables full protection versus a challenge in either vaccinated cattle or inoculated mice. And the stakeholders in the meeting that we attended, I uh, heard uh, remarkable praise for the dyadic uh, C1 cell line in terms of uh, far exceeding the ZAPI initial expectations at the start of the ZAPI program, turning in in record time and in record amounts 
uh, productivity of the antigen for both the Schmellenberg and Rift Valley antigens. So the COVID-19 strategic collaboration with Zappi scientists is showing uh, very successful results in C1 cells for uh, the hamsters vaccinated with SARS-CoV-2 RBD and challenged with uh, live uh, SARS-CoV-2 virus. And uh, we'll be reporting on those results uh, in, the, uh, in, the, in, in this quarter. So uh, our collaboration with uh, Zappi and with the Israelis, for example, shown here, uh, is, is, uh, is really making a good progress. And what we've seen uh, with the Israeli Institute of Biological Research, I'll, I'll call this the IIBR, uh, we and they collaboratively have demonstrated that the C1 cell produced anti-SARS-CoV-2 RBD back candidate and the antitoxin MABs that are being produced can be manufactured in large quantities and at low cost uh, for specific binding and for SARS-CoV-2 virus infectivity neutralization or antitoxin neutralizing activities for a sarin and VX nerve gas toxin. So collaboration started in 2018 and we have been, uh, for example, uh, here uh, as of February last year, expanding for the RBD vac uh, to combat the emerging SARS-CoV-2 virus clades. And this involves genetic engineering of the C1 cell clones, which have uh, uh, defined integration site and overproduction of the RNA and protein for the recombinant vaccine antigen candidate. The uh, IIBR experimental mouse data very clearly shows that the C1 cell SARS-CoV-2 RBD vac has high levels of virus-specific antibody binding and antibody uh, effectively neutralizing the infectivity of the SARS-CoV-2. And this data indicates that the ACE2 transgenic mice immunized with the RBD vac uh, resist live SARS-CoV-2 virus challenge in these mice. And you can see here the data from the IIB, from the uh, Israeli collaboration where uh, the, uh, the C1 cell manufactured antigen mixed with alum, aluminum hydroxide adjuvant, is inducing high levels of anti SARS CoV 2 infectivity neutralizing antibodies. So here's the ELISA. This is a log scale. These are four to five logs of. Uh, uh, antibody binding after one or two or even three uh, inoculations of prime, boost one, boost two. And if you come over here, you see after a uh, single prime and the boost here, and then now a second boost, we're getting uh, very significant amounts of uh, antibody seen here at 28, 43, and 50 days post-vaccination. And if you come over here, for example, from the uh, second boost, the plaque reduction neutralization test, the PRNNT, is showing here uh, four to five logs of uh, plaque uh, virus infectivity neutralization from these uh, immunized mice. Remarkable data. And we are working to transition now into a proposed uh, phase one SARS CoV 2 RBT VAC in 2021 with a GMP manufactured TOX validated uh, for, for our anticipated uh, potential phase one. RBD VAC product candidate to prove safety and efficacy and volunteers with our CRO and with uh, BTG and Paracel and uh, Rasmus and, and, and colleagues. So what we've been able to do in our product strategy is to take SARS-CoV-2 or up to four key variant uh, SARS-CoV-2 uh, clades 
in preparation for C1 manufacturing of multivalent, and by multivalent, I mean, uh, this includes trivalent to tetravalent SARS-CoV-2 uh, vaccine product candidates. And so we can manipulate these genes, optimize the codons in a week, construct the plasmids, uh, put those into the cloning site, into the uh, C1 cells, clone, sequence, subclone, microferment, scale up fermentation, evaluate the sample, CMP, CGMP grade, and we can do this for monovalent and multivalent variant SARS-CoV-2 MABs as well uh, with top uh, pharma companies. And we have a very active collaboration going with the former Zappi uh, European scientists and others to manufacture one or more SARS-CoV-2 MABs for potential human clinical trials uh, of SARS-CoV-2 MABs and multiple MAB cocktails. So what I want you to know is that the, uh, the spike uh, variants is shown here in green with the RBD mutations and uh, in the uh, N-terminal domain, the NTD shown in blue and the RBD shown in green, these uh, mutations uh, are, are affecting the immune responses and the host-induced virus neutralization with immunoglobulin G antibodies uh, drive selection of viral variants capable of evading antiviral antibodies via antigenic variation, and the convergent evolution of variants with mutations in the spike NTD and the spike RBD shown in green are in key epitopes that correlate with escape from antibody neutralization. So similar mutations emerge in these viral neutralization escapes uh, with both uh, from both uh, polyclonal as well as monoclonal antibodies. So we are uh, working in nine programs globally and no in, in North America and uh, all over the world uh, to uh, perfect product candidate and, and, and actual product development. Uh, and we'd be happy to discuss with you your own needs uh, and so our vision for the MABs and the VAC product candidates to deliver these SARS-CoV-2 and variant VACs and MABs safely, effectively, rapidly, and affordably to billions of people globally to advance multivalent VACs and multiple MABs as candidates for clinical trials, to expand global products with appropriately scaled manufacturing in both North and South America, Europe, Africa, and India, and to continue to hire uh, important new experienced uh, professionals and to uh, realize the vision to enable global, equitable, and affordable access to SARS CoV 2 and variant VACs and multiple MABs or a single MAB as C1 manufactured safe and effective glycoprotein immunologic drug product, VAC and MAB products. So, I want to thank you. Please contact me by email. Uh, the SARS-CoV-2 and variant backs and MAB product candidates have significant potential for COVID-19 disease. Thank you very much.